We warmly welcome you to the final lecture of the lecture series organized by the National Institute of Fundamental Studies to celebrate the National Science Week. Today's lecture will be delivered by Prof. Dhammika Maganarachi, Associate Professor of the Molecular Biology and Human Diseases Research Program. Today, she is going to talk about cyanobacteria, cyanotoxins, and human health. Cyanobacteria, cyanotoxins, and human health. I am Professor Dhammika Maganarachi from National Institute of Fundamental Studies, Sri Lanka. Today, I will be talking about cyanobacteria and the toxins they release, that is cyanotoxins, and how it will affect human health. First, I will be talking about cyanobacteria. There are more than 2,000 cyanobacterial species worldwide, and due to their presence of pigments, they have blue-green blue color. And therefore, earlier they were called as blue-green algae. And these cyanobacteria have populated the earth more than 2.5 billion years ago. And the important thing about these cyanobacteria is that they have the capability of photosynthesis. That is, we you know that the plants are capable of photosynthesis, but in addition, these are the only microorganisms who can involve in photosynthesis. And these cyanobacteria are very minor, tiny organisms. Therefore, they are not visible to human naked eyes. And if we to see them, we need a microscope. And interestingly, these cyanobacteria are ubiquitous in nature. That is, they are found in fresh, brackish marine waters and even in soil. These cyanobacteria are grouped into four orders, Kurukokales, Oscillatoriales, Nostocales, and Stignomatales. And they could be unicellular, or they could be multicellular in branching formats. Before discussing about the cyanobacterial toxins, we have to keep in mind that they can be used economically because we can get a lot of things out from these cyanobacteria. As I told you, their capability of photosynthesis, and in addition, they could be used as biofuels and also as biofertilizers, in bioremediation, as nutrition food supplements, and also in medicine. But in this presentation, I will be concentrating on cyanotoxins. These cyanobacteria when they grow in mass scale, they can occur as blooms. And the eutrophication of aquatic systems enhance the growth of cyanobacterial blooms. And because of these blooms, it can increase the turbidity of water, thereby reducing the water quality. And these cyanobacteria are capable of producing secondary metabolites. And one of the secondary metabolites is that they are producing these toxins, which we called as cyanotoxins. And these cyanobacterial blooms can be seen as greenish color, or sometimes it could be reddish brown. And normally they occur in surface waters. And, but some cyanobacteria, they occur in deeper waters and they might not be present as blooms, but still they are capable of producing cyanotoxins. And this is a picture, photograph of the Bearer Lake some years ago. 
you can see that green scum in the surface waters and due to the cyanotoxins produced from these scum, there were fish deaths occurred in Bayre Lake because due to intoxication, fish couldn't survive in this cyanotoxic filled water. This is a photograph of Lake Gregory, Nuvarelia, Sri Lanka. There also you can see the greenish color of the waters. That is also due to the presence of cyanobacteria. It's due to the eutrophication of Lake Gregory, due to the presence of nutrients, these cyanobacteria thrive and they grow in mass scale. This is a very recent photograph of Rambakangnoya, Sri Lanka. And this is, was in last October, where you could see that there were green color surface waters and the presence of cyanotoxin in these waters was uh, determined. And as such, they have to involve in mass scale cleanup to remove the cyanotoxins from water. Coming into cyanotoxins, they can be categorized into four main types based on their target organs in the human body. It could be nephrotoxins produced by cylindrospermopsin, hepatotoxins that is damaging the liver, could be by microcystins, nodularins or cylindrospermopsin, neurotoxins and also cytotoxins. And how can these cyanotoxins get in, into human body? It could be coming through drinking the contaminated water or by consuming contaminated fish and also the crop plants or through food supplements. And Interestingly, how these cyanotoxins get it into plants? Because when we use the waters of, from irrigation tanks filled with cyanobacteria, these toxins can be transferred into plants through their uptaking by roots. These photographs show some of the toxin producing cyanobacteria. This unicellular microcystis is there, and also Anabena, Oscillatoria, Nodularia, and Limbia are some of the toxin producing cyanobacteria. In this schematic diagram, you can see that how these cyanobacteria with the bloom waters, how it enters to the plant. And in this slide, you can see the colonization of toxic cyanobacteria on the surface and inside of leaf, the green leaves. When these cyanobacteria get it into the plant leaves, it can proliferate within the leaves. Therefore, the, they are capable of toxin production within the leaves. And in this diagram, you can see how cyanotoxins can enter through the root hair because they are dissolved in water and it can get it into leaves and therefore it will damage the plant growth because of the phytotoxicity and bioaccumulation of these cyanotoxins in agricultural plants. Here, I have grouped the cyanotoxins and also main producers, that is the genera which produce these cyanotoxins and also the target organism, the main organs in the human body which it will damage. Here, reports on human intoxications. The oldest record was from Southern China about thousand years ago. There was a report on possible cyanotoxin intoxication. 
Then in 1931, there was a report from USA about the human cyanotoxin poisoning. And in Brazil, about 88 patients who were undergoing dialysis, they died due to the contaminated water used for the dialysis. And also in 1989, there was a report from England when people were involved in recreational activities, uh, they encountered this microcysting poisoning with the lake waters. In this diagram, you can see the effect on human health. Starting from brain, it can damage our lungs, liver, kidneys, even the immune system, stomach, small intestine, colon, and also the gastrointestinal tract, the epithelium. And for the brain, it's the anatoxins and sexitoxins. And the lungs you, it can get damaged with microcystins, nodularins, and cylindrospermopsin. And you can see that even the kidneys, that is cylindrospermopsin and limnopsin, could damage our kidneys. Because of the severity of cyanotoxins in drinking water, WHO has established guidelines for this particular cyanotoxin, microcystin LR. It should be less than one microgram per liter. And for the cylindrospermopsin, it is it should for the lifetime like it should be less than 0.7 microgram, while for the short term it has to be less than three micrograms per liter. What we need to keep in our mind is that these cyanotoxins cannot be degraded by boiling. We have been conducting research on cyanobacteria at our institute since 2005, and we were involved in molecular identification of cyanobacteria in different climatic zones of Sri Lanka, and also identifying toxic producing cyanobacterial species. And also we concentrated on well waters in Anuradhapura and Girandhraporte, and even the reservoirs for the identification of cyanotoxin producers. And currently, we are involved in research where we are studying the enrichment mechanism of CKDU risk factors in groundwater, their uptake pathways and potential remedies. You all know that in our country, Sri Lanka, there's this chronic kidney disease of unknown etiology and mostly predominant in dry zone of Sri Lanka and among male farming community. And for the possible causes, cyanotoxin also have been identified. Therefore, in our research, we one of, in our research, first we got the permission from Department of Wildlife Conservation to conduct the research. And we collected water samples from well waters, water reservoirs throughout the country, concentrating on mainly. Dry zone, also Anuradhapura, Polonarva, Girandra Kote, Tanamangila, and everywhere. And we extracted the cyanotoxins uh, from the waters we collected, and through HPLC analysis, we were able to detect the presence of cyanotoxins in Disaweva, Kalaweva, Nuvaraweva. Also, we conducted molecular analysis. Compared to certain analytical techniques, we can, by using molecular analysis, we can identify the presence of potential cyanotoxin producers in these cyanobacteria which are present in waters. And in this 
table, I have given the cyanobacteria that were identified from Polonnaruwa and their potential toxins. And you can see that Giritale tank, Mineria tank, and even in Parakrama Samudra, there are toxin produ cyanotoxin producing cyanobacteria. Cylindrosmomopsis and Afanisomenon were present both in Mineria and Parakrama Samudra, while Giritale tank had different species of microcystin, potential microcystin producing genera. And these are the recommendations which I can give. That is, we need continuous monitoring programs of cyanotoxins in the reservoirs as well as on waters, which we are using for drinking purpose. And also we need to manage these water bodies. And also we need to accurately identify toxic cyanobacterial species since most of the reservoirs were above the recommended levels. And also farmers need to be effectively educated because use of fertilizers, we, because uh, when they apply the fertilizers to the soil, when it drain towards the water bodies, it will help the cyanobacteria to grow because of the nutrient present in these pesticides and fertilizers. And also, comparatively, molecular techniques are cheap and it's economically, we can use that to detect the potential toxin producers. Therefore, we can predict bloom performers in these reservoirs. Also, studies on the cyanotoxins such as neurotoxins and dermatotoxins produced by cyanobacteria is essential to address their effect on human health. And also, we need to study about the toxicity of these cytotoxins in human organs, such as kidneys, using cytotoxicity assays. And thank you.